Thank you so much for um, jumping on Instagram Live with me, Jack. I, I'm just such this a fan is, of your work. This is my work. first ever. I'm 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 an I'm an Instagram noob, um, so I'm very excited to see the way that this goes. Um, it's pretty cool that uh, this this can all be done with just the thing that sits in your pocket. That's crazy. I know they call it a phone, but it's our it's our pocket, you know, supercomputers. Right. <laughs> yeah, when you sort of kind of futurists are constantly trying to predict what's going to happen and you know for all the work that they did in star trek uh trying to predict you know what what the kind of future technology is going to be like, like they had the communicator basically a flip phone and um they uh they i think they they they, they were really sort of short changing the 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 capacity of these little gizmos it's it's amazing i know i know and then on the flip side you and i love analog tools too and uh, where there, there's that's not quite the same edit undo. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. how. Um, well, I was hoping in our in our time together, um, Jack, that you might just share. Oh, excuse me, a little bit of background of you know your journey with becoming, I mean, a, a nature journaling aficionado. You you really to me encompass so much of the art, science, education that I personally have been passionate about for years as well, and um, the tools you create and um, and really wanting to inspire people, not just, you know, it, it's the flip side of, it's just go make stuff, go observe stuff, that practice, not perfection. And, and I love that so much in your work. And if you might spend a couple minutes on sharing your journey, and then um, I love it. We've got a little plan and can dive in a bit with um, media on paper. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be really cool to see. Um, so a little bit about um, kind of how I got to doing this. Um, my, both my parents were amateur naturalists, um, we, and we loved just running around outside when I was a little, a little guy. And my, um, I, I, I was dyslexic, I still am uh, dyslexic. Um, and so reading is, is challenging. Spelling is interesting, um, especially add a little bit of pressure and things get very creative in that department. Um, I was afraid of putting marks on paper because I had this, this, I, I knew that when I did that in school, that it would all come back marked up with all this red pen. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But one of, on one of our field trips, my mom noticed that there was a, there was a woman who came with a sketchbook and she was drawing flowers when we went on one of our little botany field trips and she's my mom saw that i was just her shadow everywhere she went i went there too and i'd sit down in the grass next to her and just watch and and then she'd get up and she'd move to a different place and i'd be like, <laughs> right and so my mom totally she has like the mommy radar she's like interesting so Hmm. It's poignant. Art is powerful. Yeah. Well, the, the next time that we, we went out as a family to, um, to go exploring together, she went to the back of the car. She said, honey, I've got something for you. She opened up the, the, the trunk and it was exactly the same kind of sketchbook and journal, the same sort of set of pencils. Mm. And I just knew exactly what to do. So she she paid she paid that she gave me the the, the gift of, of attention. She really saw me where I was, where I was at, and what I needed. And um, she was there for me. Oh, that's beautiful. And and uh, well, ever since then, since elementary school. I've been running around in the forest with, uh, when that journal filled up, she got me another and another and another and another and, and the piles of journals have, have grown around me. Um, I find it just the most amazing way to open up the, the infinite complexity and, and beauty of the world for myself. Um, when I just go out and I look at stuff, I think my brain is just being kind of practical and efficient and, and, you know, I'm kind of, right. Yeah. Kind of Look, your, your brain is kind of quick. Gotta go. mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. Like what's okay. Well now what's this over, 
but if you are, if you stop and you make a sketch, you make a drawing of something, you take notes, you're starting to measure things and just, you spend more time, more attention with something. The mysteries that are there in whatever it is that you're looking at, whether, I mean, and, and this can be the, the most mundane thing, mm -hmm. um, the cucumber from Costco. Yeah. And if you stop and you pay, there's, there's, there's the regular attention that you give it, and then there's the next step, and then there's the step beyond that. Like you sometimes go that next step, but, but what you wanna do is you wanna sit there and be with things long enough that you start to see the novel in the familiar. So even mm -hmm. these, these things that are around us every day, there is, there is mystery and wonder and beauty in all of them if we can get ourselves to pay the sort of attention that unlocks these mysteries. And, yeah. and journal, the journal is the door to that because just without that, I kind of go, my brain goes like, you know what, cucumber, I got it. I, I get the cucumber concept, got yeah. it, but let's go on to the next thing. And so yeah. the journal is like, whoa, 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 honey, it's just slow down, slow down. Yeah, and stop just, making assumptions and mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so beautiful. And especially thinking about the connection to kids of, um, you know, anytime I sit down and do art, my sketchbooks are this magnet for, you know, all the little kids to come up and I'm the mother of a five-year-old and we've been, you know, drawing together since she started making marks and, um, and that tool for attention. And that's something we share together. And, um, you know, so when I think art is a tool, tool for slowing down, attention, meditation, observation, um, I remember things, you know, so much more vividly when I stop and sketch, clearing my head. And um, I, I just love that what you said of the gift of attention mean, means so much. And, um, and that crossover to art and science really excites me, too. Cause I always thought I'd be a scientist. <laughs> and you are. I just love to draw and paint and you know my favorite thing was being outside sketching and so turns out i really like hanging out with scientists to learn about their work too and that art is that connection point of observation and so that, that's been a passion for me is helping to to share that tool with you know kids people of all ages that um we can all in our own way embrace being naturalists and um it's uh makes the world a richer place <laughs> there's there's as, as you start to kind of look around as either an artist or a scientist, um, anybody who's, as long as you just, you start to pay attention, you realize how little you personally and we as a culture and society, how little we, we understand really what's going on. And yeah. you, think, you think you've seen it? You think you've seen a lemon? Uh, oh man. <laughs> Lemons, lemons got it's going going on. And, but you, you have to you have to kind of get yourself in the mode where you can appreciate all the lemon secrets that are are, are, are waiting. And, and, and same with science with with with, with science, you think you know, if, if you were taught science as like this big pile of stuff that is in a book that you need to memorize. That's no like science. It's a, it's a way of of observing and trying to figure stuff out and tinkering and messing around that is really useful in yeah. figuring out these the, the mysteries are, that are around us. And what happens every time that you figure out a little mystery is that that, that opens up several other doors to other mysteries that you didn't even realize were there so it's not that like you're trying to like I'm gonna I'm gonna un I'm gonna get the universe I'm gonna figure this out. The more the, the deeper you dig, the more you realize how infinite the whole could be, and yeah. there's no way you can dig that. But but you can get a little bit closer to an understanding, and so it's this wonderful blend of attention and rigor and humility, and oh, it's. Science is, 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 is a beautiful way of, of encountering the world. It doesn't take the mystery out of it. It doesn't take the love out of it. It is, it's this, it is a lens that is, um, it, is it, it, can, it can really help you kind of get around the lazy way that I regularly think yeah. and, and see another layer, just like art does. You, yeah. you, it, there's, there's this, there's, there's wonder and beauty anywhere you dig, and both those are systems to 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 encounter that on a on a on a personal level, and 
um, you can also then be able to share that. Sharing it is such a joy. Yeah, yeah, the curiosity, inspiring that curiosity and discovering the beauty and, uh, and finding ways to share it. And just for me, I, I find so much joy in that. And, um, and yeah, it makes the world a place just even more full of wonder when you can stop and start to unlock the secrets of the lemon. <laughs> And, and, and yeah. the, the people kind of like, you know, I'd, I'd rather not go and go the, um, the like, you know, the, the science approach, because I, I, I like to live in a world full of, of wonder and mystery. And, and I, I think that what that when, when people say something like that, it just, it makes me feel really sad, because I know that the way that that person was taught what science is and what science is about is just is just the shallow end of the pool. I mean, that's that's the memorize this textbook and like that's what science is, as opposed to this this way of thinking, a way of seeing, a way of of interacting with with phenomena and trying to figure things out based on 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 things that you can even you can you can test and and again as you start to figure things out, it just reveals even deeper levels of how much you really really don't know, and what? that's. Joy. Yeah, I love that. There, you know, there's the framework to it. And what I love about your approach with nature journaling, too, is there's a framework to that as well. And I know as an artist, I often like to give myself some parameters. I feel, you know, if I say I'm doing a little series in this format, you know, it's a place to start to face that blank page. And I love that um, in your really wonderful books and um, methods that you've kind of cultivated over the years, you've got this framework, too, that I find helps open up people, gives them freedom to get started, not be intimidated, just dive in, mess around and start observing. And it's the messing around and having fun with it, not worrying about, you know, creating a beautiful piece of art, but it's that process. That's something I remind myself all the time. It's one of my mantras is just trust in process. There's so much beauty in the process of that exploration and the observation and, um, mm -hmm. and having, a, having a bit of a framework can be a good tool of saying, okay, here's, here's some of this framework. I'm going to approach this to explore it. Um, and I uh, love that. Um, uh, we, mm. the, the, and the, the, the process, um, yeah, well, I've spent a lot of time trying to, trying to when, when I see somebody who's like really on their game, I get really curious, like, like, what are you doing? Like, why, why are you doing that? When, like, what you did that first, and then you did that, both in how they're drawing, but also I love to try to get in, like, how are you thinking about things? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of my, the process that you'll see in, 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 in books that I, um, uh, that I, that I work on, it's, it's, th these are sort of kind of um, hacks to help us kind of to, to remind us of like, oh yeah, I can play that way too. So like my, my yeah. fundamental mantra is I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of. Yeah. So notice, observation, 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 observation. It's the start of anything. And then you're looking at stuff. And what I want to do is really embrace, I, I, you don't have to, to even pretend to have all the answers and have stuff figured out. We, when, when questions come up, you just want to hug them and kind of like, ooh, the, you're a question. Thank you for coming out and playing with my brain. Because then your brain, <laughs> you get curious, your brain, your brain gets dopamine. And, <laughs> oh, oh, it's so true. Good. It's oh, so true. Oh, it feels yeah. so good. <laughs> yeah. and, and then you are... Um, and, and your brain actually works better when you get this, this chemical on board, right? And then you add on top of that, that um, you, know, you, you don't have to be afraid of the unknown. That the, the unknown is, you know, the undiscovered country is, I try, to, I try to run to that place as fast as I can and yeah. kind of get into the place where like I like now I don't know I really don't know what's going on here and these structures here and and, I, and I'm getting into things that I really fundamentally don't understand and for a lot of the way that the, 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 the way some of us are, are trained is that what you want to do is you want to stick with the familiar like okay let's identify things you've got this identified all right great that's where this is where things are going to end yeah and yeah. but you know this there's just so many more layers of once you embrace the wonder um yeah. it just curiosity becomes yeah stay curious 
Oh, st you, you got to stay curious. Yeah, stay and curious. You also get the do dopamine. So then you're <laughs> all about, about the dopamine. <laughs> all about the dopamine. Um, and so, yeah, when, when the, the dopamine helps you keep your focus on this thing longer. It helps you get into the flow state. It helps you with all these sort of things. So you, you don't wait for curiosity to come to you. You, think, you say to yourself, you know what? My brain's going to work better if I do some curiosity right now. So <laughs> I think I'm going to, you can go do curiosity. You can go, <laughs> and go. <laughs> And, and, and then you kind of go like, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, like, no questions are coming to me. Um, who, what, where, when, how, why? Okay, like, uh, okay, well, one of those, th there's, there's going to be something that kind of comes in and you start, uh, I've got this uh, a wonderful sketching buddy, uh, buddy Fiona, who has, has really kind of pointed out the power of starting with, with the little questions that are right in, in, in front of you, the, the easy ones, the easy ones. So start with those, like those little mm -hmm. easy questions, you, because what, what she's, help me see is that what you're doing is you're going to stick with it and it's not it's not that um it, it's it, that that there's there's that question but then there's the question that's behind the question mm -hmm. and then there's the and get it rolling yes behind the question but you have to ask that first one to to um to to, to get to those richer those richer states um yeah. the story you know in in grendel right? Um, there's this, this giant monster that kind of bursts into the mead hall and just makes a ruckus and like chews on Danes and stuff and, and it kind of goes stomping out. And the, uh, and so, you know, you, you, you fight that monster. Um, you, you, you tackle that problem and you tear its arm off and hang it on your mead hall. And you think like, right, I've answered the question, right? But, and, and but and then you go to party and you think like okay this is solved but then then what happens is the next night you're there partying and the doors of your mean hall are burst open and this monster comes in and just it's Grendel's mother, right? <laughs> so it's it's there's 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 the question and then there's there's the mother <laughs> back there right and you have to kind of you gotta you, you gotta, gotta open that door. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. and that's yeah. and that's where like now you're really over your head, right? That's okay. <laughs> and that's 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 where you want to be. You want yeah. to surrender Embrace to it. That. Embrace it. And there's there's yeah there's there are questions, and yeah. then there's 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 the questions mother, right? And uh <laughs> that, that's that's good stuff. Well, gosh, Jack, let's um dive in and uh, maybe take a little look at our um our little hummingbird friend. And um, you might kind of share some of the tools we've got and we can see if we can knock out a sketch in the next little bit. Let's, let's do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought that what might be useful and fun is to first, I'll, I'll just, um, yeah, I, I, as, I'm, as, I, as I turn my, my camera down, I'm not gonna be able to see what you see. So you're gonna have to let me know that but yeah, this works again. I'm kind of new to how to how to how to Instagram like a like a boss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I thought it'd be useful to to just to, for me to do a few sketches of kind of different angles and and poses of 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 hummingbird stuff. Oh, I love. It. Let's and, do it. And then um, and show you some features of the hum hummingbird structure that you're gonna. If you look for those, oh yeah, you're gonna see it again and again and again. I find it's helpful that helpful to kind of have an idea in my head of what I'm expecting, and then when I'm drawing, here, here's but, but here's there, there, there's 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 that can, that can be a trap though, right? Because you can end up. I've got this way of drawing a hummingbird, and then a hummingbird is in front of you, and you're drawing the picture that's in your head, right? Yeah. You we don't want that, right? We want to be connecting with the hummingbird that's out there. But there's so much going on with the hummingbird that it really helps you first to be kind of equipped with some understandings of parts of the thing and how they fit together and places to look and sort of structures that you'll see. And then on the real hummingbird, it will be different than your expectation. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and then what, so what you're doing is you're, you're looking for that little feeling of surprise, like, oh, I thought your beak would be longer. And then, um, and then, but you, but you, you've actually got a reference point. So let's, should we do that? Yeah, yeah. And what you're talking about too reminds me. I, I really enjoy the idea of um, tools for observation. And if anyone here hasn't checked out my series, I've got a little free mini series of videos on um, 
uh, arttoolkit.com, the learn page. Because I really, like, I, I agree with that, that having a basic vocabulary and these tools in your pocket for approaching the world is super useful. And then you still, you can keep them in your pocket and bust them out to use whenever you want, but still try to use those fresh eyes. So I always, I, I really love that idea of just tools. And then, you know, we, we decide when and how to apply them and um, um, trying to keep our eyes open and, and, and build our attention. All right. Let's see, we've got a little bit of your tripod leg there. I wonder if you could get your sketchbook just a little bit more to the left. Yeah, that's looking good. All right. Awesome. Oh, you're so there great to be game for the, this first Instagram, Jack. Thanks again. It's, it's really fun talking to you. This is, this is cool. This is, this is, it is, it's so much fun when you kind of, you, you, can, you can play with um, someone who's a, a like mind. <laughs> well, I think we could geek out about this for hours and hours. I think, <laughs> I hope sometime we, we do get the chance to meet up in person. Um, all right. All right. So let's, yeah, let's, let's get this COVID thing done. And then let's make that happen. Sounds like uh, a plan. All right. Um, so I am, I'm going to, um, I usually, when I draw, um, I start my drawings with a Prismacolor Coal Erase pencil um, because it's this incredibly pale pencil that is useful for blocking things in. My guess is, though, that, um, that, that <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I start drawing with this, that on your screen, um, on, on, the, uh, on the screens, it's not going to show up very well. Uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll try and copy what you're doing too. My camera's a little closer. I, I have, uh, at your suggestion, I've picked up one of these Cola Race, and I haven't used it very much. You know, sometimes I think, oh, I'm going to pick this thing up, and I'll be just yeah. like the person who uses it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, and, if, uh, if I and then I continue the sketching brush, like Maria. <laughs> if I use the same brush that Robert Bateman did, my drawings will look like Robert Bateman. Just like his. The, uh, oh. and, and if you've got any friends who are photographers, uh, if they've been practicing and working at it for a long time, um, the, the, the most, if you want to draw a, drive a photographer nuts, the number one question to bug them is you look at their photography and you go, oh my gosh, what kind of camera do you use? <laughs> right? Same thing. So, so um, can, if, if I'm drawing with this level of darkness, can you see that? Uh, that's a little light. I wonder if you want to maybe just use a darker pencil and yeah. uh, uh, for this, fun, this, I can use your blue one. This, mm -hmm. this kind of pencil here is not this uh, erasable coal erase, but it is a, um, it's a light blue pencil. So I'll just pretend that this, this is. Okay. Right. So the first thing that I, I, I will often do when I am looking at a hummingbird, I'm gonna draw it from a several different kind of poses and positions here. Um, let's see here. All right. Um, I will often look at what is the angle kind of from the head to the back, right? If you're looking at it in profile, mm -hmm. what is, is that angle there? If you're looking at it from the front, then it's stacked all up on, on top of itself. But, mm -hmm. um, so, but for, for, for this, um, so is it sitting at kind of a low angle like this or is it sitting fairly upright? And I've, I've got a question from someone that you are indeed left-handed. Uh, no, I think that this must be reversing for... Oh, okay. Good, so, good to know. So um, um, if I write um, hello, did that come out reversed? You look, yeah, reverse to me and we'll see if it's to everybody else. Okay, okay. Well, we, we've just dispelled the myth that you're left-handed. <laughs> uh, that's, that's right. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> so... Um, so then once I've, I've got this, you know, that uh, very often hummingbirds will have a rather vertical little posture to them. So that's what I've, I've got here. I then block in roughly my body shape with an oval and, and a head. Different species of hummingbirds will have different proportions. Um, something like a little calliope hummingbird will have a larger head because they're tiny little hummingbirds. Um, a bee hummingbird will have a really big head. Um, I'm going to go for something kind of Anna's hummingbird style, sort of a medium size head here. So did you ever take any bird courses? Like I know Cornell 
has um, has some that look really interesting for ornithology studies. Have you pursued that or is this built up from your experience and uh, personal naturalist pursuits? Um, I, I, I did a, a, got a master's degree studying um, Lazuli Buntings um, and just have been a bird geek for most of my life. Um, so those are a few things that kind of um, helped with that. I haven't taken any of those online courses, but um, they sound like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the hummingbird's tail um, often sticks down at a different angle. So I'm kind of getting this head, body, tail um, angle. Mm -hmm. And then you'll also often see that there are, um, there's, there's feathers right down here, undertail coverts that will um, help it um, sort, of fe sort of form that tail into the body. So here's just sort of a general posture of my bird. You're not going to see legs on these. Or it's really funny, the Latin name for the hummingbird group they are the apodiformes, so mm. apod feet. So the name of this group is the birds that don't have feet, because um, they have these tiny little feet that will then you know stick onto the the whatever little branch they. Um, so you really don't see much in terms of of feet. The wing, however, is really pretty impressive, and the wings will often droop down. The wings will droop down, and different species will have different length wings. Um, for something like an Anna's hummingbird, the wings are generally not as long as the tail, so they'll stop before that. But there are other ones where the wings are as long or as longer than the tail. So um, that, is, that is a really good, if I was looking at a, say, a Costas hummingbird, it would have a much longer wing, it would be about the same length as the tail. So these are some of these like big picture elements of birds that you can pay attention to in learning to some of that framework for sketching them, that head to body angle. Yes, uh, exactly. Looking at the angle of the tail and then say where the wings connect to help get a sense of like the posture. And this reminds me that as a birder, like as you get to know them, you catch just a little glimpse of a silhouette and it helps get that idea of, oh, you know, that looks familiar and kind of getting that, that aha moment. Um, oh. You're absolutely, absolutely right. So this is just sort of a, a, a generic framework. And you notice there's no detail on this. This is the purpose of this is all to get my brain to play with proportions, to play with the posture of the bird. Um, oh, it just flew off. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> no, okay, no, it just landed again. But now it's landed, but it's landed in a different position. This time it's pointing towards me. So I'm going to jump over to this drawing here and start to build that up. All right. And even though it's sitting here, it's looking around right and left. And so I can also do just a little head here. Um, when I'm drawing in the head of the bird, what I will often do is the, the angle on the forehead ends up being a really important little, uh, an important little feature. Mm -hmm. and so I will, I'll look at that. Um, is it like on many hummingbirds, it's this sort of smooth slope? On other little birds, sparrows and things, or, or ducks, they can actually have a steep forehead. So I'm going to look at that angle there. Right. So yeah. all this is the sort of stuff that I would start to block in with my pencil. Mm -hmm. my, my, my light non-photo blue pencil. And again, if I was doing this for, for, for real with something like this, what you'd be looking at, which you're not able to really look at because this is just so faint, is I would have the same thing drawn, but it's that. So you, you're, I'm guessing that you can't really see anything here. Yeah. But on my piece of paper, I've got all, the inf I've got all this information, but it is just ghosted out. Mm -hmm. I've got enough information for me to be able to draw on top of without, um, and when I start drawing on top of it, people will completely ignore that all those light blue lines are there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that photo blue pencil is a real nice tool for you. And it actually does erase if you go in and want to get any little bits off, it looks like. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so once I've, but 
but because you can't see this, I'm going to continue working with these. But you're mm -hmm. going to notice on these drawings, these, these blue lines are just a little bit too much in my face. Yeah. All right. Actually, I'm going to test and see if I can enlarge. Oh, there we go. That's closer. Yep. Um, and let's see. Is that helpful? Um, yeah, your sketchbook isn't quite centered. If you kind of rotate it a little bit, probably clockwise for you. There we go. There and, we go. Um, so that will be just so that I don't want people looking at just this tiny little distance yeah. spectrum drawing. Um, and move this down. There we go. And I just had a question too. I'm just throwing a little water on for fun. The, yeah. the pencil is um, water resistant too. I mean, you can put watercolor over it and it's not going to dissolve this particular pencil. That's right. That's um. right. Um, and it's not quite as waxy as say, uh, as say a, a, a one of your Prisma colors. Um, yeah. But you, you will, if you do have a lot of it down, it will be a little bit of a resist for watercolor. Mm -hmm. um, but on the, with as lightly as I usually use it, that hasn't been a problem. Although I've noticed that with some sorts of types of paper, it, it does sort of pop out more than others. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. So once I've got my bird blocked out, then I am in a place to start to to draw in my my details and 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 wing wing details and things like that. So, so, so uh, pause one second. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the the sample. I'm going to um, sketch a little following the sample bird and, and flesh one out on on a sheet of paper up here too. Okay. So um, just so and if everyone I, is working from that little hummingbird too, and oh, that. that actually working from that hummingbird. This is just from memory. Ah, right? I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I thought that I would start with this as sort of a demo and then maybe jump over to trying to kind of replicate more what I'm seeing in that picture. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So and I, I'm just going to, I see, um, pause on one second. Sorry again, Jack. Everyone, I just want to let you know, I will be saving this demo both to IGTV and I'm doing a recording on my computer where the comments will all be to the side that I'll post to YouTube as soon as I can um, after we're done here. So it will be available in multiple ways uh, for viewing afterwards. All right, sorry to interrupt you, Jack. So we've got our cute little hummingbird. Our cute little hummingbird friend. All right, so um, what I'm gonna do is just put a few little features in. I'm gonna have our little bill out here. Different species have different length bills. A different, some um, in other areas have even bills with curves in them. So there's lots of kind of cool stuff to, to, to watch with that. So then from the, the bill, a little line going up to the eye. And you'll see on lots of species of hummingbirds, behind the eye, there is, there's a little white teardrop space. Not on, not on all species, but you'll find that on a lot of hummingbirds. So that's a, a good little feature to, 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 to look for. And uh, I'm just curious, I see you working with another kind of pencil now. What are you using now? This is a General's Layout Extra Black number, 555. And oh. that is, um, uh, well, I was out on a Nature Journal Club field trip. There was a, a, a young man there who was sketching, um, and he loved these pencils. And he said, um, Jack, you've got to try these. And I brought it back, put it in my, my pile of things to do. And this is the first time I am busting it out. So... Um, I don't know what it's going to be like. It's making a nice dark mark, though. Um, mm -hmm. I'm liking how the this kind of goes to 11. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. All right. I'm going to bring my, my forehead over to the top here. And I'm going to, on the lower part of the bill, kind of kiss into it, kind of I want my, my, my head to kind of come out onto the lower part of the bill just a little. Um, depending on the type of bird that you're looking at, um, they will have, they will have, a, a num they will have, they, 
males and females can have different patterns on the head. And I'm going to start with kind of a female bird and then we'll turn it into a male bird that will get really gaudy and audacious. Okay. Um, often behind this little teardrop here, coming down on the side of the face, there will be a little bit of a slightly darker, perhaps grayed out area, kind of a little comma. That's going to be covered up by the gorget, that big, wonderful throat in the... Um, in, in, in males. On the cheek, very often on a female, there are, instead of those, those big, uh, dramatic, bright feathers, there will be kind of a few little spots, and sometimes some of those will have just a few little flecks of iridescent feathers on them. We'll get into drawing iridescence in just a moment. Oh, good. Um, so on the shoulder here, there's a little bump of feathers, the scapular feathers that sit on top of the wing. For the wing here, I'm going to have my wing in several different, several different parts. There is an upper part of the wing, an upper corner of the wing called the covert feathers. And these feathers up here, they cover up the bird's wrist. And those can, if the bird is iridescent green, the covert feathers will also be that same iridescence. The rest of the wing will be um, without iridescent color. So it's super helpful with birds in particular to, to learn some of the basic anatomy of them, to have a uh, sense of, it, you know. Uh, it makes all the difference. That way, when you're out there, you, if you can look at a bird and go, wow, your secondary feathers are really small, then you know that there's something that should be called secondary feathers, and you've got a term for it that will help you keep that in your head long enough for you to capture on paper. If you're looking at the bird and you say like, oh, you've got some little dark part there, and it's kind of bigger over there, and then smaller over there, but you, then you don't have landmarks that you can, that, that will be... Um, as, as useful to you. Landmarks, that's a great way to put it. And, and you have published a book on drawing birds specifically too, if anyone's interested, yeah. uh, that, right? Mm -hmm. There's a zone of little feathers up that tucks down underneath that called the covert feather, sorry, the uh, secondary feathers. And secondary feathers on hummingbirds are tiny, tiny little things. Um, and then they have primary feathers that stick down from that, that are a big paddle of, of feathers. And if I want to, I can put in some little feather edges coming down here on this. Depending on the angle, you'll see it kind of look wide at the tip, or if it's rocked away from you, then sometimes it looks more, let's find out if General's pencil erases. Yeah, it does. Um, it'll look more streamlined. Just to, that all depends on the angle, how it's being held. All right, now I'm gonna give my little bird a back, get here to the rump. And at that spot, my bird is going to turn down towards the tail here. My this anatomical approach is so interesting, Jack. Um, I, I feel like personally, myself as an artist, I tend to be very um, sort of loose and gestural in, you know, in an approach. And I wonder if you're going into the field and sketching a new animal, do you make a point of sort of studying it first in your studio before going out in an environment where you might encounter? Or, or what's some of your approach versus that loose versus a more tighter and more anatomy-based approach? So my, 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 my general approach is when I'm doing this sort of stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm loose, I'm gestural, I'm looking at the negative spaces next mm -hmm. to the bird. I'm, I'm blocking in sort of shapes and proportions um, and, and angles and, 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 you know, does it have a super droopy wing? Yeah. Uh, you know, that's oh, terrific. Uh huh. 
but what is what's kind of what's going on with all of these different sorts of things yeah and then on top of that framework mm -hmm. if i've studied my anatomy i can then dial in this sort of detail on top of this mm -hmm. brilliant yeah start with this like i'm gonna you end up with the birds that are just too cold and rigid and and they, they don't feel fluffy they don't feel alive Mm -hmm. um, and um, oh and it starts to come together when you add a little value and shading and that little guy's got so much dimension now starting up yeah so there's there's a lot of I'm, I'm rather try to be deliberate about I want to understand the structure. Mm -hmm. When I'm doing this, I want to believe what I see. When I'm blocking, mm -hmm. believe the bird. Don't go with your little model of what's in your head. Believe, <laughs> right? Yeah. The, the bird is right. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so I will... I'll try to get myself not to draw my generic hummingbird. I will try to get myself to really pay attention when that bird pops in front of me. What am I seeing? What, am I, what are the angles? Often the silhouette is one of the most important things for me to get. And then as I start to go about doing this sort of a thing, I'm thinking to myself like, oh, I actually don't understand what's going on on a hummingbird wing. Yeah. Oh, do they have an allulate? And then I can start to do my research and, and look at, at, at photographs and all these sort of things and go like, oh my gosh, hummingbirds don't have an allula. And um, so that's going to kind of influence, you know, this, the, the, the shape of the wing in this way. Then I, um, second, I'm going to, Should let's let's keep this one as a female. Um, everybody draws male birds, and we'll, we'll we'll get sort of a male bird with a gorget over here. But but um, there's 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 way too few female um, <laughs> hummingbirds that are are <laughs> are, 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 are drawn and, and sketched in this world proportionate to their 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 population out there. <laughs> um, so I'm now just going to drop a little bit of. Of, of, of green test colors before you hit the page um, on, on top of this bird's back. And that bird has that little sense of iridescent in that green too. Is that something you've got some, some tips on depicting a little bit of? Well, actually, I wanted to, to talk about that because I was suspecting that when I get done here, it's not going to really feel that iridescent to you. Uh huh. Um, you know, that, you know, how can you tell that? So one thing that I, I, I am doing, let's see if I, I don't know if we can see. Yeah, I'm just trying to look upside down. So I've got a little bit of color variation going on in here. Yeah. Um, so there's sort of a... Um, a yellow green in here going to more of a greeny green. Yep. Um, and now I'm overworking it and I should have stopped earlier. <laughs> oh. But uh, we, all, we all say that sometimes. Hey, I've got a question. Do you ever work with uh, ink or do you, do you tend to feel more comfortable with pencil? Oh, yeah. Actually, my, my, I'll, I'll, I'll pull out one of my sketchbooks here. Um, what, I, what I've been finding is that um, pencil is so lovely to work with. And then I love the pencil sketch that I get. And then I kind of go tromping around in the field a little bit more. And in a very short period of time, my lovely pencil sketch has turned into a big smudgy blub. 
Yeah, that's been my problem with pencil. So I, yeah, I'm more, I think from the field, I got really used to ink. Yeah, so generally speaking, I am now, um, I'm, I'm working a little bit more with, um, with, with, well, I'll, I'll show you, I, I'm using ballpoint pen. Hmm. Um, so these are, um, let's see, are we in, there we are. All right, so those are, this is ballpoint pen sketches, then with watercolor and gouache on top of it. Mm -hmm. Do you still do the photo blue often below the pen or just dive in on your field I, 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 I do, um, but it turns out the non-photo blue doesn't really show up on toned gray paper. Mm. I've been doing a lot of stuff on some uh, on a Strathmore toned gray sketchbook recently. And so the non that non photo blue doesn't show up on it very well. Um, what I sometimes have been doing is using um, a um, just a a, 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 a a light purple colored pencil mm. that that does sort of show up reasonably, reasonably well. Um, so here is um yeah, you can see that that purple pencil underneath that ballpoint pen in there yeah here is part of a egret neck that didn't get inked mm -hmm. right? yeah no that's nice the the pencil lines really disappear under the ink and you don't need to worry it you know about erasing them with your approach that's really neat yeah i, I yeah. like i like being able to see some of the process mm -hmm. that, it, that is behind it um, so when you see somebody's kind of initial lines, how they, they built that up, um, that's... Yeah, I was just going to say, especially in a field notebook, there's such immediacy to sketches. And I remember seeing, you know, whenever I see other people's journals, I feel like I'm right next to them looking over their shoulder. Mm -hmm. And there's a real intimacy that um, it is one of the reasons, too, I think, looking at photographs versus journals that, that can invite you into a deep story in a, a, another sort of way. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely agree. Um, here's just a slightly different approach. These ones, it's old ballpoint pen. And what I've done is just use the ballpoint pen lightly. And so you see those little ghost lines in the background. Mm -hmm. um, those are, um, that's just ballpoint pen, but just with a very, a light touch. Oh, they're lovely. And I can really see with those eagles, the, the shapes you're blocking in and getting that body structure which gives that, that silhouette snapshot of those birds. Yep, yep. And, and then, so that's initially, I'm just all about angles and those sorts of things. And then secondarily kind of coming across and kind of going like, oh, those are the scapular feathers there. That's what I'm seeing. That's, you know, being able to do that does really help you be able to draw them. But if you just kind of get an understanding of the anatomy, you just don't, you don't want to be running around in the field just putting down your understanding of the way you think things should be. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. All right, I'm going to show you these upside down so that. Um, <laughs> You're going to shake us up, Jack. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, so you can see those, those, uh, these sort of initial lines. Yeah. In there um, here, Pelican initial lines. It's, so yeah, I, I, I love a ballpoint pen because you can press hard um, or you can, um, you can go uh, really ghosty like you can with yeah. a, um, yeah, here you see those purple, um, those, those purple guidelines mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that blocked that one in. Oh, no, it's so fun to see your process. Mm -hmm. I, something that's neat about the purple is that it's purple. And, <laughs> and, and, it's, and, and there's just, that, that, that's just, that's just sort of fun. It's neat to have a little bit of this, this sort of weird purple lines popping through. My, my, my father was a professor and always had a collection of pens. And for the holidays, he'd often give me purple pens. And he'd always call them his purple pens of passion that he'd save for editing. So every time I see a, a purple implements, I think to myself, purple Aww. pens of passion. <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's really cool. Um, but let's let's just sort of uh, then you'll also see on this this other branch over here. Here here's a little. Let's make this one 
turning its head off to the side a little bit here. Um, so if the bird is, its head is off to the side, that beak is going to be foreshortened towards you. So you're not going to draw the beak the same length. Is, is this guy on the screen? Yes. All right, so I'm going to kind of come up, give this one a little eye. And this one, I am going to give it a little gorget. Um, so the gorget is that iridescent, crazy loud um, pad of, of, of feathers on the throat or uh, of, 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 the, of the little hummingbird. I just saw kind of a fun question of, um, have you ever experimented with creature design going the imaginary route? Oh, I have two daughters. Um, and we, you know, we will, they, they, they want to, to, to sit around and we'll kind of make things up. We'll, they'll, they'll draw kind of ad ad adventures that they had. And, um, um, you know, we, so we will we'll, together, we'll kind of come up with, all sorts of imaginary beasties that we sort of find ourselves encountering out there in the, the, the forest. So this little hummingbird here, it's gonna be a male and it's, um, so the middle of its chest is right here. It's gonna have a little bit of a vest. Um, the, the tail feathers on this are gonna come down to here and its wing this wing here is going to wrap around here and it's going to tuck both these wings underneath it, underneath its tail there. Um, something that's kind of cool that uh, you'll see that uh, David Allen Sibley does in a bunch of, of his sketches is you know how birds have those scale like patterns that overlap. Mm -hmm. They'll just do a little bit of cross hatching like that and uh, Boom, you've got scaly belly. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of a neat effect. But what I want to do is I'm going to make this bird uh, give it a, an iridescent gorget right here. I want to kind of play with some iridescence. And also I can tweak this to make it look a little bit more iridescent here on this, this female. Um, so here's the thing about iridescence. Um, it's a structural color. If you took a red feather and you ground it into a powder, you wouldn't get a red dust, this, this red iridescent feather. You would get a gray dust. And what's going on is that it, the little surfaces of the, the, the barbs and the barbules are spaced in such a way that it is just bouncing this red light back to you. Oh, so cool. And so, but that also means that with a slight change in the angle of the gorget, you are now no longer seeing color. So on my little bird friend here, um, what I'm going to do is... Yeah, maybe, maybe bump your page up just a little bit more. There, perfect. Right. And is it, this guy's still... Yeah, we got you in the frame, yep. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have in this zone here, I'm going to have a variation in color. So part of it is going to be magenta and part of it is going to be um, sort of yellowy orange. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, or do I want it to be like that? No, I think I want more of a yellowy orange. All right. Um, so I'm going to have this. I am going to have So you're building in some of that variation. Yeah, so I'm putting in I'm putting in some variation. And I want more than just one color kind of looking back at me and initially I'm just making this all 
I think I will soften the edge here of this. There we go. So I've got a little bit of variation in the throat color here. Mm -hmm. And Oh, there we go. Yep, some of that variation and creates a little transition. Now I'm just taking a clean brush and I'm licking the edge of that and it fades it a bit more. All right, I'm going to get just a little bit more. Yeah. All right. So I've got a little bit of a variation in it, but that's 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 not quite done yet. Um up here in the crown. I'm going to get a little bit of the same thing going on with a little bit of variation there. And the next step is going to be really kind of counterintuitive and, and it, is, it is the scary part. Um, but I'm going to let, before I do the scary part, I'm going to let this business dry and go on and paint um, the, the rest of this bird while that head is drawing. Um, and oh my goodness, Jack, I just noticed Instagram giving me the warning for our um, two minutes remaining. With our hour. Should we, we could hop back on or um, we could kind of wrap up. I'd love for you to tell people what you've got going on because I know every week you're doing some really cool stuff right now and um, where, where they can follow you and, and find out more about all your projects and such. Um, just so it doesn't cut us off, uh, would it make sense to, for us to kind of go away and return in just a moment? I think that would work out just fine. And then, uh, yeah, let's hop back on because I think it'd be fun to finish this up and then that'll give it one minute and we don't have to, to rush our finish. All right, now here's, here's the thing. This little bad boy here, when the light is at the, um, is, is, is bouncing directly from the, the, the feather to you in the right direction, you will see bright color. However, when with a slight angle change, it goes black. It goes not to a shaded, slightly darkish red. It goes black because it's a, it's a, it's a, if it's, if it's either bouncing the color straight to you or it's not. So on these iridescent colors, you'll see that they go, that they will go to super dark um, really quickly. So the, 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 the secret formula is I want, I want bright um, interacting colors that then goes very, very quickly to black. Oh, cool. And sometimes when I do this, it works. And sometimes when I do this, it doesn't. So, no, no, no pressure. <laughs> no. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go. And see if you can tell us a little. Oh, I know you're concentrating. Oh, there we go. We're just getting a little bit of black kind of showing maybe the, the turn in the neck. Like the the dimension of the uh, of the the neck there. Yeah. Um, so I want yeah they want that just to kind of go right into dark, and, and then uh huh, and then I stop. Uh -huh. <laughs> Need that great big stop sign. Uh, do you ever use iridescent watercolors? Um, no, I don't. Um, and the the, the reason that I, I I don't do that is that. If, uh, first of all, it's fun to try to get yourself to do it this way. Um, but if I, um, actually, I want to, I'm tempted to slightly overwork this and just see what happens if I push it a little bit further.
Um, there you go. Yeah. Probably should have stopped earlier, but that's all right. Um, so playing with those lights and darks with iridescent of that yeah. black or the go vivid straight, color. straight into black. Um, and if this this hummingbird turns its head, um, you only are going to see the the light the the bright on it when the light is behind you. If the light's not behind you, shining, so the light wants to be, the light is behind you, the light goes directly. So we, this is really cool. When you see these guys doing these little display flights, mm -hmm. there'll be a little perch up here. Here's the female hummingbird sitting here going, da, 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 da. right? Yeah. And, um, the sun is shining this way, right? Yep. That means that the male has to do his dive here. And it will be flashing its gorget at her right there. So you, you want the sun female display. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's fun to pay no, attention to. He has no color in his gorget. Because you only see that color when the sun is directly behind you. Um, and I'm going to actually put a little bit more... There, I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. um, so what I've done is I put this big black thing in the middle of, now if you look at a bunch of photographs of hummingbirds, you're not really gonna see this effect very well because those, homing, those, those photographs are often done with flash photography. So you set up a super bright flash and you can get the flash giving you gorget reflection on a perched hummingbird. Um, and, um, so it makes for patterns on hummingbird throats. The, the, the photograph that we have, um, which is, um, from, uh, birdpixel.com, of uh, uh, Vivek Kanzode's, uh, wonderful bird, um, photography website. But mm -hmm. the, um, those are done with a powerful flash that is going to illuminate the whole gorget. And that's, that's an interesting observation of reality versus kind of our, our augmented reality in a, of a sort. <laughs> yeah, so when, when you, if you copy that exactly as you see it in a photograph, you are usually copying how a bird looks when it is, um, when it's photographed. Yeah, yeah. And that is, that's, that's just a, it's a different kettle of fish. Well, Jack, this is all so fascinating. And I, it makes, I have one question I'm curious about, which is, do you, do you have a favorite bird? Oh, I do. I do. Um, the only problem with my favorite bird is that it changes from day to day. I'm uh -huh. very fickle. I'm, I basically fall in love with whatever pretty bird pops up in front of me or... <laughs> If it's a really subtle bird, I'll go like, oh my gosh, that's just such a, oh, such and, a wonderful, subtle, subtle, the, the, the browns in um, the, you know, the, 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 the female house sparrow. There's, yeah. or the, the, I, I, that sort of stuff is so much fun. But if I'm out and I'm watching, watching hummingbirds, I will be in love with hummingbirds. If I'm out and I'm watching um, gross beaks. Oh, then it's all about the gross beaks. Um, it, things that I just think are ridiculous and should be loved more um, <laughs> are are jays. Um, I, I think that you you take a look at an, a, the next scrub jay you see and and just imagine that it is a jewel, and you can really freak yourself out looking at a scrub jay. I'm a big fan of kingfishers. Oh, they're a favorite of mine, too. Oh, they're mm -hmm. so much fun. Can yeah. So much fun. Yeah, yeah. Jack, I, I could sketch all day with you and chat all day with you. Um, oh. But uh, I, I think we can wrap up and would love to hear um, uh, all, all the cool ways that people can be involved with you and your work. Um, what's coming oh, up? So generous of you. Uh, sure. 
Um, so I am, uh, people can find me easily by going to johnmuirlaws.com. And when you go there, um, you'll find I've got a calendar of events. And um, the, every Tuesday, I have a free one hour nature journaling workshop, which I'm gonna actually turn this over to the Jack Cam. Um, and no, I have to go like this, don't I? Otherwise I'm sideways to you. And, there we go. Uh, yeah, but now it's, there we are. Hi. Hi. Oh, now I get to see your birds. I like your birds. Oh, oh yeah, I've been messing around a little bit. Here, I'll come back and, 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 uh, and say goodbye as well. <laughs> oh, you're getting a glimpse of my studio. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah. Um, so um, Tuesdays, um, yeah, I, was, I, I like side notes just said, imagine if cardinals were rare. Like mm -hmm. think of, of, of all the birds that, like if rock doves were rare, if brewers blackbirds were rare, people would say like, there's this incredible, incredible bird. And it has the most, just these gorgeous, deep iridescence and purples and blues. And it has this bright white yellow eye. And when it gets excited, <laughs> the pupil starts to go, flashing right you know people would just go nuts for <laughs> Bruce blackbird if it was rare so like treat the 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 common birds that are around you as yeah. if like, oh, it's a Bruce blackbird yeah yeah well that's the fun of drawing them is you'll start to notice the things you might not have otherwise noticed yeah. and, and see them um, differently like think about a magpie yeah <gasps> boom that oh, is that, gorgeous that's yeah oh so crazy cool like that <laughs> tail and i mean oh that's that's so much fun um, yeah yeah but yeah like I, I like to try to find I, I i find like when i get into a bird you know whoever it is there there'll be aspects of it that just get me really really excited um there's something that was just amazing um that i i saw um David Sibley had, uh, if you go and follow his stuff, so he's, he's this wonderful bird watcher. Oh artist. yeah, Sibley's Guide to Birds. It's like bird Bible. <laughs> right. Um, but you can also follow his blog. And he's uh, got this one uh, blog where he's discovering these sort of variations in the, in the, the morphology and structure of, of, of juncos. Mm -hmm. And you really have to, most people go like, oh yeah, Junko, I know that. And, but what I really respect about what he did there is he looked at the Junkos long enough to discover something new about them. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, that's, 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 that's good stuff. So yeah. um, I'm right now uh, during this, 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 these, the kind of COVID time, um, I am teaching tons of free online workshops. So every Tuesday we've got Ask Jack, which is a bunch of people come into a Zoom meeting and they say like, you know, I'm having trouble drawing spiky things. How do you draw these spiky things? Like, you know, the, 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 the either the cactus um, spines or how would you like the sea urchin, how do you, you know, or like, how do you, I wanna draw otters? You know, just they'll, they'll kind of drop a, I want, <laughs> deciduous trees. I'm drawing uh -huh. some of them. They're giving me trouble. And so we'll kind of work with whatever the problem of the day is and uh, spend an hour just kind of workshopping that or several things. And uh, those are a lot of fun. So we can, if there's something that is, you know, somebody said again, recently we did one on reflections. People said they wanted, wanted reflections. So we got, we had, we just had a ball. Awesome. And then awesome. at the end of that, we get to kind of look around and um, sort of, look at all the different people from all over the world. Um, we've got people who, um, uh, who regularly uh, come in from India. There's one um, really uh, uh, young boy who joins us regularly from India and it's 2 a.m. his time. Oh my gosh. And wow. like, that's, Beauty of things that's, online. <laughs> and uh, so those are, those are really fun. Those are, those are a hoot. Um, yeah. So yeah. Wednesdays I have at noon also, I have a one hour just discussion between people who are teaching um, 
nature journaling and sketching and 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 drawing and sort of science educators it's oh, this fabulous. open educators forum where huh. we share ideas and strategies and so homeschool teachers are coming into that uh, classroom teachers are coming into that um i'll and- mention a, a side note there jack we have an educator program um, to supply our palettes at like super deep discounts and our art toolkits. So if you want to help spread the word, we are really excited to help make these things accessible. Because especially now with so many people having to be at home, you know, putting together that little take anywhere kit you can have always available is something Your we're really trying to support. Brilliant. Um, and, and for educators, you know, we um, it's on our website. We've got a, a little application to get in touch with us and um, I'll send a link your way, but please spread the word. For one of our, our, our educator meetings and mm-hmm. um, have you uh, talk about that. Are those yeah, I'd love to. available for, um, uh, for homeschoolers? Yeah, we do student discounts and educator discounts. So I've personally worked with um, a number of schools in my region coming in and doing workshops like kindergartners throughout the year. And there's a whole school that I've done, um, help them implement nature journaling from staff to, to all the grades. And... Um, so making those tools accessible and, and sketching techniques is something I'm really passionate about. And so if we can help support your community there too, we'd be really excited. So, and then I've got just a couple other kind of announcements every, so that's my Tuesdays, Wednesdays, every Thursday, I have a more formal drawing class where I have slides and I have, uh, sometimes I have handouts that people can print out in advance of the class. We recently have been doing this series on drawing horses. People downloaded and printed out these drawings of uh, the horse skeleton, and then we put muscles on top of oh, it. Cool. Then we worked uh-huh. on shortening it. Um, if you missed any of these classes, we also film them, and I put them up on my YouTube channel and also on my website, uh, along with all of the handouts, so you can find all that stuff there. Oh, that's so, fabulous. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's Ask Jack Educator Forum, then the, the uh, Nature Journal Workshop. Um, I'm also about to start a series of 40, 15 minute lessons for school teachers um, or homeschool parents who um, want a weekly, a weekly journaling project. Nice. Um, that's going to be really fun. There's just going to be, it's going to be a progressive series. So you're going to want to start with the first one. And by the end of the year, we'll be getting into really higher level nature journaling strategies and techniques and all sorts of cool stuff. And um, that's, that should be a lot of fun. Very cool. Well, we'll send people to your website and would love to hear, you know, when those are available, if we can help spread the word and um, yeah, all about, you know, putting the, the arts and the STEM disciplines and, and making it all accessible. And Jack, I just want to thank you so much for spending this afternoon um, with all of us and, and sharing your, your stories and, and approaches and um it's all, all really inspiring and uh thank you well thank you thank you no this was a blast i really really enjoyed this um and uh thank you so much for in- inviting me on i'd love to uh join you again if you if you want to kind of uh play around again this was really a hoot yeah and i'd be happy to jump on your end too um you know your I, 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 I do want to talk to you about um, i want to get you in on the uh, educator forum i'd love and, to do that yeah of a do one of my nature journal workshops specifically about um kind of tricking out your journaling kit because i know you've done so much thinking about that and uh you could also you know share people like you know what's in your palette and <laughs> the um that would that would be really fun to see um for um people who came to this from because they knew about me but they don't know about expeditionary art um you got to go um, there, there are, there's some really cool palette ideas here, um, and, and resources that you can, um, if you are tired of lugging way too much gear into the field, <laughs> um, this, this would be your answer. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. At expeditionaryart.com. You can learn, um, all about my personal travels. I've been bringing together art, science, and education, um, through my work for about the past 15 years primarily around stories of climate change in the polar region. So I've spent a lot of time sketching with gloves on in very chilly places. Um, but then, then growing out of that work has been the, the art toolkit and putting together these supplies and materials. Because not only do I love to do my work, I really want to help inspire and empower everybody else to go outside and uh, 
and have a lot of fun and cultivate that curiosity and, um, and find joy in, in the natural world. And uh, yeah, you, you've come up with a, a really smart streamlined system at really reasonable price to make it accessible to people. So I'm really respect, I really respect what you're doing. Thank oh, you so much. Thank you so much. We'll, but we'll, we'll be in touch more soon. <laughs> That'll be fun. I'm looking forward yeah. to it.